Since the late 1960s, Exxon has been undertaking a significant effort in improving oil spill response technologies. The Fast Current Boom Project is one of the many oil spill research projects that have been conducted. In December 1998, Exxon conducted a series of tests on oil recovery booms at the National Oil Spill Response Test Facility in Leonardo, New Jersey. This facility is owned by the United States Minerals Management Service and operated by Mars Incorporated. The facility, generally known as OMSET, is a wave tank 660 feet long and 66 feet wide with a maximum depth of 11 feet. It has two bridges that span the tank and move from end to end. One is used for towing equipment such as skimmers and oil booms and the other is for gathering data, photographs, and video of the tests. The tests can be run in calm water or in simulated rough seas by introducing waves into the tank. The speed of towing and the frequency and height of surface waves are controlled from this room. The objective of this Exxon project is to develop a boom that can be deployed when current or towing speeds exceed one knot. Such a boom would increase the efficiency and effectiveness of oil cleanup operations. Booms can fail under various wind, wave, and current conditions. Entrainment failure is the condition where the water approaching the boom begins to shear off the captured oil and carries it along with the flowing water beneath the boom. As current speed or towing speed increases, this condition deteriorates until most or all of the captured oil escapes behind the boom. In some situations, this may be aggravated by adverse wind and wave conditions. With conventional booms, the first loss occurs at only about 0.8 knots. Note the speed window in the bottom left-hand corner of the screen. As speed increases, incoming water flow continues to shear off more oil at the upstream end of the contained slick and carry it out and under behind the boom. The massive continual escape beneath the boom, termed gross loss, occurs at only about 1.1 knots. Here is the same test viewed from above. This boom is from Applied Fabric Technologies. It is 26 inches high with a draft or below water depth of 12 inches. It is 100 feet long with an opening of 33 feet. The oil used is HydroCal, the standard test oil used at Ohmset. It has a density of 0.91 grams per cubic centimeter, an interfacial tension of 22 millinewtons per meter, and a viscosity of 1,000 centipodes at the ambient temperature of 10 degrees Celsius. Again, as current velocity increases, the oil is pushed toward the apex of the boom and gradually begins to escape. The development of Exxon's multi-porous barrier boom was initiated in 1993. It uses several porous layers to gradually reduce the surface velocity of the incoming water and floating oil to avoid entrainment failure under the final impermeable boom. An analytical study was conducted in 1993 to establish its feasibility. A flume test program was conducted at Texas A&M University in 1994. The present wave basin tests were conducted by Applied Fabric Technologies Incorporated with assistance from S.L. Ross Environmental Research Limited. Substantial co-funding was provided by the United States Minerals Management Service. The number of barriers can vary according to specific considerations such as ease of towing or weather and sea conditions. During this program, we first tested single porous barrier boom systems. Here, first loss tow speed is only at about 1.2 knots, and gross loss occurs at about 1.6. It is a substantial improvement over conventional booms, however. As porous layers are added to the boom system, the performance of the system increases. A double porous barrier boom system increases first loss speed to about 1.6 knots, and gross loss to 2.2 knots. Here we see an example of a system with three barriers. Each is 24 inches high and 60 feet long with porosities ranging from 74 to 83 percent. The porous barriers gradually reduce the water velocity, in this case up to 72 percent, before the oil reaches the impermeable boom. 
This impermeable boom is Applied Fabrics Globe Boom. Here in test number 75, the triple porous barrier boom is towing about 300 gallons of oil at the onset of the test. At 1.5 knots, we introduce an additional 50 gallons of oil from in front of the boom system. The first loss isn't observed until 2 knots, with gross loss occurring between 2.2 and 2.4 knots. As you can see, this system is capable of containing the oil at tow speeds over twice that of conventional booms. We also tested both types of boom systems under wave conditions to simulate rougher seas. First, we tested a conventional boom in 8-inch waves. The waves do not significantly affect the first loss, which occurs at about 0.9 knots, nor do they affect gross loss at 1.1 knots. The multiple porous barrier boom systems perform similarly regardless of surface water conditions with first loss and gross loss events occurring at 1.8 and 2.4 knots respectively. However, the porous barriers did have a tendency to reduce the wave conforming capability of the impermeable boom. In conclusion, these tests of conventional, single, double and triple porous barrier boom systems demonstrate that oil containment rates can be doubled using multiple porous barrier booms. As most marine vessels can only tow at cruising speeds greater than one knot, conventional booms are very difficult to tow without a significant loss of oil. The multiple porous boom system allows the vessel to tow the boom at one knot or even higher cruising speed. Refinements of the system may increase the towing speed even further and thereby achieve even higher containment rates. Finally, because porous barrier boom systems are less subject to current forces than conventional booms, they are also easier to deploy in areas where fast current conditions exist. These areas, such as rivers and near shores, are considered the most challenging areas for oil spill recovery operations.